I'm here today with uh, Chris Cattrall, who's a PhD student in Macau, China, but he's also a journalist. Chris brings an interesting perspective, I think, to Amy, and we look forward to hearing what you've found about Amy since you arrived, Chris. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Dent, for having me. Well, I got in last night and I noticed there's a lot of students here. And this is a very big um, educational center within Europe. And so I thought this is a great context with which Amy to begin. And this morning, I talked to more students, and it turns out the ones I saw were also in the Amy Student Task Force. Now, they're not just here helping people sign in or get you to the door. They're frontline medical students. They're practicing Aspire. They're practicing ESME, not just in their classrooms, but on their campus and in the communities where they're doing healthcare services. It's quite amazing, actually, that you'd have that caliber of engagement. So as a researcher and a journalist, I'm drawn in and mm -hmm. so whatever you're doing here, something's right. There's an energy building. Well, students are a main uh, anchor, really, which keeps everything together here because they are great at finding their way around helping all the visitors. Yes. And we have something like three and a half thousand guests, participants, call them what you like, at Amy this time, which is superb. But the student task force um, in, in, uh, interviewed the students to, to become, there were more applicants to be student on task force than, than there are, and, and uh, there's, there's a great number of them. I'm, I'm glad they've made a good impression on you already. You mentioned in passing, though, two other words, Aspire, and uh, this is one of the, uh, Amy's great initiatives. How, how do you rate that? Well, I began learning about Aspire last year at your Helsinki conference, and interviewing Dr. Ron Hardin, I thought, okay, this is something that is lost. We talk about research, but where are the great teachers? Uh, as someone who teaches myself, and also as a student, uh, it does matter how you communicate your messages, how you engage people, and how that's applied. So Magdalena Patricio, I've seen her lecture on Aspire, and I spoke with her this morning, as well as a few other doctors, and it seems to be really creating an international movement beyond medical education but within these universities themselves, mm -hmm. when they see the doctors in the communities, something goes up. Uh, that's interesting that you say that, that, the model of what a doctor is and what a doctor should or could be able to do now is quite different, I think, from the model which possibly we remember f from uh, 50 years ago or so. Um, it's much more of a global image now or a global awareness, isn't there? And I believe your PhD is going to be on a topic to do with that. Uh, within global studies, mm. there are a variety of areas that we um, examine within globalization. Mm. And global healthcare is one of the top ones. My other area is global communications. At the intersection of that, we're finding that more people want to learn about healthcare. People are concerned about greater science and they want to know who their doctors are. So you have a variety of, I think, tweets and social media mm -hmm. programs within Aspire mm -hmm. that the doctors can generate beyond some of the um, older professionals. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite, quite dynamic. Chris, you've uh, been able to look around Amy <laughs> now for a little while. And how do you think uh, Amy is developing now in this its uh, 45th year of conferences? Well, I spoke with a doctor this morning who came in 1997 when he mm -hmm. was still a PhD student mm -hmm. at Dundee with Ron Hardin. And now he's a uh, vice dean in Barbados. And he really was talking about how you had British colonial model in India and Pakistan, Bangladesh, um, Hong Kong, and all of these early modules are merging into the newer information. And then you have high tech centers and biotech centers across the world from Basel to Shenzhen in China. Uh, just an amazing mm -hmm. synergy really that's happening. And you felt that just with the sign in this morning. <coughs> so even with the few doctors I yeah. already talked to, they yeah. thought, okay, what are the next mm -hmm. stages? Yeah. Where yeah. can we take this? Mm -hmm, yeah, and I think that's where the Aspire Award, uh, Aspire Awards for Excellence, come in because there has to be some way of, of accrediting and recognizing universities and medical schools which are, are t teaching um, exceptionally well. Yes, and this, uh, I think, because Amy is a global organisation, the credibility of the Aspire Awards is greatly uh, amplified and, 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 and it has street credibility. Absolutely. And I think we have to have this really to, to, to make sense and, and to make the progresses which you're talking about in the, in the developing world. Absolutely. It, it engages yeah. people at, mm. at the community level mm. and the doctors have that information, mm -hmm. they can share mm -hmm. it, inspire themselves mm -hmm. and then take that back to yeah. their universities and their yeah, communities yeah. really. You mentioned ESME a moment ago, uh, Chris, that's yes. the Essential Skills in Medical right. Education program which, which we run. Um, I think that matches quite well with your idea of a global reach of AMI. Well, absolutely. If you can have curriculum that is driven by the students who are engaged in the community, 
they can add to how things are assessed. And when you have the direct assessment right out of the community, that can be applied internationally, particularly when we look at other global problems, from climate change to uh, cities that have extreme air pollution, mm -hmm. water pollution. These are happening in real time. This summer we had fires in Sweden, California, Australia. All of these things demand a global attention right mm -hmm. away. And I think if you have students who are mm -hmm. at the forefront of these kinds of um, I want to say events, mm -hmm. uh, you have a very new curriculum yes. that's dynamic mm -hmm. and centered. You're hinting, of course, at, a, at a schools with a revised curriculum where there is much more interest in producing doctors who are appropriate for the needs of the community in which they work, and this is absolutely, absolutely. Uh, cri critical. And uh, the, the strength, in my opinion, of the ESME courses is that not only does it introduce all these principles of uh, medical education to uh, perhaps students or, or, or young doctors, but also to, to medical schools who are revising their curriculum. So for, in a 12-week package, it makes a very valuable uh, uh, piece of uh, postgraduate or, or even undergraduate learning, uh, learning equipment. I'm interested in your uh, response to that and uh, uh, thanks very much again uh, to, to you Chris for, for taking part in this interview. Thank you very much for having me, honoured.